Hello makers, welcome to another studio vlog. Happy fresh new week to you all. I hope you all are doing well. I am doing well. It's Wednesday, which seems to be typically when I start vlogging again. Well, I'm gonna close my window here, hold on. I think they're getting ready to do a little bit more yard work outside or it might be trash day, I'm not sure. I'm still waking up a little bit. It's another foggy, cloudy day. Yesterday we got quite the show with Carl the Fog, as we like to call our fog out here in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, with it beautifully rolling in over the bay, just over, across the way here from my window. And I got a nice little time lapse of it and yeah, it was so nice. It's so nice and cozy right now. It'll burn off and be fairly warm here, but nothing compared to other parts of the state, the country, the world. I know I'm very lucky, um, but I will be feeling that heat here pretty soon. I'm actually this week preparing to go up to see family for a week long vacation. I am so excited. <laughs> I'm very much in need of a vacation, which feels weird. I know a lot of us are like, if you're if we're blessed enough to be working from home right now, it's kind of like, oh, I need a vacation. But you need you need a change of scenery, you need a change of rhythm, and I'm really excited to have it for an extended amount of time. It's going to be great. So I'll be since it's you know still COVID times. Um, I that's kind of the best thing that I can do for vacation right now. Um, and But I also am really excited to spend so much time with family, to spend time with my nephew, to spend time with my sister. I'm hoping that we can go on some really long walks together and explore her new neighborhood and to spend time with my mom, help her out with a few things around the house. And also a big thing that I'll be chatting about throughout this studio vlog is preparing for a big reorg of my workspace because I'm busting at the seams, har, 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 pun intended. <laughs> I ha need more storage space. I need to be better organized. I'm starting to make more and more bags. Thank you all again so much for your bag orders last week. Um, and I just need a, a different setup for a better workflow for, for the growing business. So I'm going to be going to my organization guru, AKA my mom, <laughs> and we're gonna be brainstorming. I have a little bit of prep work to do before I head up there. So of course we'll be taking you along in this vlog um, throughout the week as I prepare for that. Um, and we're gonna be kind of solidifying her organization of her new craft room. And many of you, if you've been long time, viewers know that I have a couple of vlogs that I'll link down up above and down below all the various places of in her previous home. Um, we moved her craft room from upstairs to downstairs so she could have easier access to it. Um, and it was, I think it was like a whole vlog, a whole vlog, if I'm not sure. I think, it, or it was part of an episode, but it was a good chunk of it. And we, put like all the furniture in new places and put up a pegboard and all kinds of stuff. So this craft room is bigger. Dare it? Yeah, it's bigger. <laughs> it's of course a different layout. Um, it's probably about 80% there, but it's all the little tiny things that need organizing. She um, has so many notions and that she's gathered over the years. She has different machines. She has her 1962, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll all find out together soon. <laughs> um, singer machine. Um, and it, she now has the original table that goes with it. She has a more modern singer quilting machine, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, it's going to be craft room mania over the next few vlogs because it'll be a multi-week process but yeah and personal making is still happening um my focus is just more so on making bags and growing the business right just this week anyway and preparing for vacation and getting reorganized 
Um, but I'm cross stitching. I'm getting ready to cross stitch for a good long time here um, for the Patreon Zoom stitch and chat. And um, my cardigan, I haven't knit on yet since I finished binding off. And honestly, I probably won't pick it up again until Saturday when I am back uh, up in Sacramento. And that's when I'll be picking up stitches. So stay tuned for that later on in the vlog. But I better get ready for the stitch and chat. I have some muffins in the oven right now, some pumpkin muffins. I was just craving something cozy and pumpkin-y. Um, and I've had some currants, so I put some currants in there. Uh, it's a wonderful mix by Simple Mills, which is one of my favorites. It's a paleo-friendly, allergy-friendly brand, and they have ready-made kits and a variety of things. I'll put a link down below. Um, but yeah, anyway, more coffee and then stitching time. Got a quite a bit done on all of that gray area down there and I'm starting to fill it in. The RIP is in sequence. So I actually have, I think I might finish this in the next couple of days. So pretty awesome. I um, now need to get to work for a little bit and then I need to get to work a little bit on that too. Oh, and this by the way, is something I'm bringing for my sweet nephew when I go up uh, in a couple of days here and it is dinosaur eggs and inside they're all like plastic wrapped which is annoying but um inside you can like soften it a little bit and inside are little dinosaur toys so it's like a little excavation kind of fossil type thing even though they're like whole little baby dinosaurs inside um, but he's so into dinosaurs so i think this will be a fun activity to do together and we might do it outside because they're redoing their backyard. My sister and my mom have a duplex. And so they've uh, joined their backyard together and took down some trees and they've got new fencing and all kinds of stuff. And it's all dirt for the most part right now. They're gonna put, I think, clover on the ground instead of grass and try that. And my sister's a wonderful gardener. She's like, goals for me to be a gardener like her. Um, but right now he's been out there just kind of digging around and pretending to find things that have come up from taking the trees out that used to be in the backyard. And um, that's what made me think that this might be a fun activity. But anyway, first work, I think I'm good on coffee by the how fast I'm talking right now. <laughs> and I'll check in with you guys a little bit later. So good to be out and about. Oh, there's so many birds around. I had to take some packages to the mail to the post office, so I thought on my way back I would just drive a little bit further and go for a little short walk. Ooh, birds! <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> Um, I thought I would go for a little walk by the water, get some fresh air before I start the full day. Oh, I'm so glad I did. There's not too many people out right now. Yeah, it's very lovely. Nice, crisp morning. So nice, and it's weird to vlog in my car. It's been a while. <laughs> 
but I realized there's so many walking trails in my neighborhood or surrounding neighborhoods that I've yet to discover. I kind of stick to the main one near my house. So I think that's going to be a goal of mine in the coming month or a couple of months is to explore those. And I think an incentive would be to take you all along with me to share it with you. I just saw some people kind of going up a trail that I never noticed before that goes up into kind of a hilly area. So yeah, I think that'd be nice. There's more and more people starting to be out and about with their masks on and just taking in the nice weather today. But I better get back to work. I've got a money. I've got a meeting that I need to get to. I might need more coffee after all, or tea. Earl Grey. Let's do some Earl Grey. <laughs> lunch break i got everything cut over there as you can see <laughs> and now i'm gonna tuck into this lovely tuna salad i just have a little can of tuna some um i guess they're called rainbow fingerling potatoes and um some lettuce and mayo and olives yummy yummy um but i wanted to share with you i am let me set this down here and sit down as well. I am reading a new book or listening to a new book uh, because I finished, I think I mentioned I finished um, Recipe for Persuasion by Sonali Dev. I really liked the couple of books that are in the series so far. They're based on Jane Austen novels. Um, and now I've just been wanting something cozy because of the weather my desire for a new season <laughs> to begin, namely the fall. And I picked up Practical Magic again by Alice Hoffman. I had begun to read it last year and I just couldn't really get into it. And this time I was like, I'm gonna try the Audible book. There were a couple of narrators. The one that I chose that I really liked is Cherry Jones, I believe is her name. If I have it wrong, I'll put it here on the screen. Um, and I really, I'm really digging it. It's definitely, the story is a bit different than the movie, but I really like it. The tone is definitely there. It's more, the writing style is much different than I expected. Um, but I like it. I'm liking it so far. I think I'm on chapter seven or something. So I'm pretty fairly early on. But it's going really fast um, because I love listening to books when I'm sewing. So I'm going to eat my lunch and then get back to it. Well, apparently I got the abridged version of Practical Magic on audiobook and not the full thing because <laughs> I just finished it. <laughs> so it's kind of a bummer, but I got the gist of it. I got the tone. And so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next book, which just came out. It's a prequel called Rules of Magic. So I'm going to download the proper full version and get started with that and keep cutting and sewing. <music>
I've seen some other makers, namely Gorgeous Jewels of So Sweet Violet, do chain stitching for her pieces as well. I usually do it for the smaller bits, but I'm gonna try it for these. Let's do it. Never mind on that. <laughs> I just remembered as I was getting ready to do it that the reason I chose not to do that for these pieces or this part of the puzzle is because I usually use pattern designs where there are elements that I want to ensure are on the bag somewhere, like a gnome needs to be somewhere or a rabbit. And the way that I cut it in production, I cut a piece and then I cut it in half to be the two sides of the bag and that means that I need to ensure that those two pieces those two halves are kept together and so for me it's just as fiddly maybe even more so to try to do that and restack them and everything and to do it in chain than to just do it as I have been <laughs> and they're such big pieces too I don't know, maybe I'll try it someday, but I need to get her done with these so they can go out the door on Friday. So I'm just gonna do it like usual. So back to it. Now that is some serious chain stitching. <laughs> That was a full day of sewing. I still have a little bit more to do, but um, I'm done with the sewing machine for the evening. I'm going to take a break though. I have some happy mail that I need to go pick up a few things for the shop, but also some fun things for me that I've been waiting on for a while that I can't wait to open up. So I'm going to go grab them. Oh, happy day. <laughs> that is fun to get that many packages in the mail. It's been a while that I've had that happen. So I got a bunch of replenishment stock for stitch markers and stuff. And I got some really cute B stitch markers because I had already identified an alternate um, stitch marker if the other ones didn't work out last week which they didn't because they don't have a little hoop for a jump ring but I am going to be making those into needle minders so I got the magnets today the glue is delayed and it's scheduled to get here Saturday and I will already be gone on vacation so we'll see I might be sent back I don't know you can only do what you can do but I got some other things for the shop as well, like office supplies and stuff. Like I needed more labels and business cards, stock and all that stuff. But then I got fun mail, which I haven't had in a while. And some of it I had ordered a while ago and some of it I ordered it um, as a treat yourself kind of afternoon. <laughs> I was feeling really up and down last week, which I think I talked about last week and over the last few weeks, I mean, let's say since March, but especially so the last couple of weeks. And it's been a while since I've treated myself to something nice and high quality that feeds my spirit. And I have a hard time justifying that and doing that, especially right now, um, cause times are tight and they're going to get tighter here. Um, but I went for it and I'm really, really glad I did. So a while ago, I got a subscription to Taproot uh, magazine. Um, I had bought an issue a couple, a few months ago, and I really, really loved it and enjoyed it. And I love the newsletters and all of the content. And um, I'm slowly making my way towards a zero waste lifestyle, low waste. Um, and I say slowly now because um, things have slowed down. It's hard to get to bulk shops here and everything, but I'm starting to pick up, pick up where I left off in March on that. Um, and Taproot really plugs into that kind of mindset, minimalism, using the, what the earth gives us, um, 
uh, very holistic and of course knitting and sewing and making. I love how it's all in there. So I got the latest issue and I got uh, a tea towel. I'm starting to build a tea towel collection because I've gotten rid of using paper towels except for emergency cleanups. I have just a small stock that I use. I probably have like I think I bought like a box, but it'll probably last me a couple of years <laughs> of like probably about 12 paper rolls, paper towel rolls. And I use it just for, like I said, emergency cleanup or um, that's about it or some really nasty stuff that I don't want to ruin my towels with. Um, so tea towels, I'm starting to build a collection of those and they're really fun. There's some really, really pretty ones out there and Taproot sells merchandise as well. And they have a great selection as well. I've gotten some Swedish dish cloths from there that I love using and yeah, so I got a little blueberry one. I then got some charms from Forest Charms, Maria of Woolen Forest on Instagram. I love these charms so much. I've drooled over her beautiful aesthetic for so long <laughs> and I was really excited to nab some in her latest shop update. So those arrived as well. It's really pretty like kind of green gemstone and then um, this like hand kind of meditative hand with a heart in it and I can't wait to use those on my knitting projects. And speaking of crystals, I, this is the thing that I treated myself with, um, for what's coming ahead for being brave to recently kind of say, I want my business to grow and start making plans for that. Um, and I used to, I've always been a little woo woo, <laughs> meaning kind of hippie with the earth to an extent, not super, but, um, when I was younger, we used to go to half moon Bay all the time. Um, half moon Bay down probably about a couple hours, three hours away from here. And I loved it. I was like 15 or 16, right in that sweet age of when, beading was really big. This was like the mid nineties and, um, crystals. And I think that's when practical magic came out and, you know, it was, it was awesome. And it just has that kind of like new Englandy kind of ew, new Englandy kind of, um, weather foggy. And, um, there's a bead shop that's still there. I just found out the other day, it's still there with crystals. And I had like a crystal necklace. I had like a poison ring and all this stuff. And it's something that I've been rediscovering, um, crystals and tarot cards and all that kind of stuff as a, as a way to, to enhance meditation and focus energy and um, focus my goals and how to achieve goals. And so I saw this on Instagram. This maker is an amazing maker. Um, shop, uh, shop Dreamers of Dreams, Dreamers of Dreams shop. And I'll have all the information for everything down below if you're interested. They are friends with Kelly of Royal Bee Yarn Company down in Pacifica. Um, they are somewhere else in, um, she's somewhere else in California. I think Elizabeth is her name. And she came out recently with a necklace with crystal stitch markers, like crystals on some stitch markers. And then it's like on this beautiful necklace and Kelly's selling them in the shop right now. And I went, oh, I remember seeing some of that stuff when I was last in, in the B and I went online and she had these gorgeous necklaces. I'll grab some photos from her website. And of course tag that it's from their website that she recently made of, um, Herkimer diamond. I don't think, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, which I'll read off here. It says, um, with its pure crystal light clears the chakras, opening channels for spiritual energy to flow. I mean, we need all the help we can get there. <laughs> right now. So I was like, yes. <laughs> 
It stimulates conscious attunement to the highest level and is particularly helpful in activating and opening the crown and the third eye chakras. Found in Herkimer, Herkimer, it sounds like it probably is Herkimer County, um, New York, and the Mohawk River Valley. Uh, these diamonds act as powerful amplifiers when you are using them with smaller stones. So it's pretty cool. So I just love it. I love the the chain that's on it, and I love the it looks like it was just like dipped in, I think it's 18 karat gold. So it was $75. So pricey for me, cause I usually just get costume jewelry at Target, <laughs> but not too crazy. Um, and it's just absolutely stunning. And I just, I love the look of it. It's simple and just beautiful. Cause there's a lot of crystal necklaces and stuff out there that they're just not my style. They're just, I don't know, they're too busy. They take away from the crystal or, or what's going on. And I feel like this just really enhances it. So yeah, so that was my haul. <laughs> I haven't had a haul of any kind in a very long time. So it feels really good. And then that will be it for a while, <laughs> except for when I get those, uh, I just saw it out of the corner of my eye, the Satsuma Street kit, when I get the next kit. But for now, I'm going to make some dinner. I am going to do a little bit more shop work. I'm trying really hard to get everything in order so I just can sew everything tomorrow and just package Friday and then just chill out and pack for vacation on Friday. Um... So I'm kind of burning the midnight oil today. So I'll probably see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. I hope I was about to do like daily vlogs. So I felt like a daily vlog today. Um, but I will see you tomorrow, which will be right now. Good morning. I feel well rested. I've been up for some time. I just put my face on because I have three meetings back to back <laughs> and I it's a three muffin kind of day. So I got some muffins that I made the other day out and heated them up and poured a iced tea with the Earl Grey that I made the other day. And yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for these meetings. I've been at this table all morning. I cut, I ironed all the, well, I was over on that station over here. This is where I usually have my ironing board. I put it up for my meetings. Um, but I was ironing on interfacing all this morning. And then I cut all of the maker's bags and the drawstring bags in half, trimmed little bits here and there to make sure it was all square, did the boxed, um, corners, which I like to do. I like to do that beforehand. Um, I cut out like a little two by two square, two inches by two inches. So a lot of labor intensive work on my feet today, but after I'm done with my meetings and have a little bit of a lunch break, um, on my lunch break, I'm going to start sewing away and putting zippers on and all that stuff. So it'll be another heavy production sewing day, but I'm looking forward to wrapping it up um, mostly today, have a little bit tomorrow before everything goes in the mail, and then I can go back to personal making stuff, namely cross stitch. And I'm gonna start on my ochre cardigan, picking up the stitches. So I'm ready to do the collar, and it says in the pattern, do it every, pick it up like every two stitches or so, and you knit to kind of finish off that, uh, like the collar, um, I want to say hem, but you know what I mean. And um, I think I'm going to do that and see how it is. I have to just kind of go with it and, and test it out because my yarn is a little bit thicker than the fingering weight that it specifies in the pattern. So it's been one of those um, makes where I've had to just try on and see how it fits me rather than going squarely by what the dimensions and the length 
uh, are indicated in the pattern for like how long you do the waist and all that stuff. So it's been a, it's been a really good confidence booster in that I know how to fit things to my body and make adjustments as needed and that I can use the patterns as a guideline. And that's something that I'm, I am realizing, I mean, it's a lesson that you have to relearn over and over again that you just have to do it in order to learn that you can't go into something trying to know as much as possible beforehand that sometimes you it's the doing it it's the making it where you will learn the skills and you have to be comfortable with making mistakes so it's my inner perfectionist pumping myself i'm pumping my inner perfectionist up <laughs> or quieting her down whatever how you want to look at it but i'm gonna get to these meetings and prepping a little bit and i'll check in with you all a little bit later I'm multitasking before my next meeting, which is about to pop on any second. I'm snipping threads on the pockets. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. in me I am done <laughs> oh my goodness my back is killing me I'm gonna wave the white flag but I got a lot done today all the zippers are on I just have to top stitch one more side and then uh, you know so <laughs> and finish them all up tomorrow so I'll be it will probably take about I want to say four more hours of work maybe five. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. So definitely a morning thing and then get them out early in the afternoon, which will be great. But I am going to clock out. I've clocked out of work already. Um, I'm not quite hungry yet. So I'm just going to drink some water. <laughs> I've got dehydration from sewing. <laughs> and I was listening to my book nonstop and I'm really liking it. I'm really liking it. Rules of Magic. It's, it's not sweeping me up like some other books that I've read recently, but but I'm really digging it. And I, I'm eager to watch the movie. I might do that when I'm up at my family's. I think that would be a nice kind of chill day kind of thing. But yeah, I'm going to chill out, just kind of reboot my brain here. I want to cross stitch and stuff, but Literally, I've been making all day. <laughs> so I'm going to be realistic, be gentle. I really want to read, actually. I'm, I think I'm going to switch gears and read my Taproot magazine a little bit. But just chill out the rest of the evening. morning it is friday and i am happy as usual that it's friday i have just a few more minutes before i'm gonna hop over there to the sewing table and i'll be there the majority of the day in between on breaks from work um but before i get started there and i'm in the zone i wanted to give you an update on my little windowsill herb garden that i know a lot of you've been following along since march or April daily vlogs. So without further ado, here's here's where it's at. I'm not super happy with it right now. 
first up we have my little lettuce sprout that could that is starting to die and needs to be harvested and this random sprout that came in <laughs> that I'm just gonna let it do its thing but I think today before I head up for vacation it's time to eat whatever is left so I'm gonna be making the tiniest little plate of an hors d'oeuvre or something later today but I'm very proud of it it just wasn't getting enough sun as you can see it's in a very high walled planter um but it was an experiment and I'm proud of it next up we have my strawberry plant that continues to flourish and grow let me put down my coffee hold on it is growing like crazy I am gonna give it a real big drink of water before I head up for just about a week, so I'm hoping that it stays alive <laughs> while I'm gone. I would bring it with me, but I think I think it'll be okay. There's a little bit of yellowing of the leaves down here, but not too bad. But it continues to grow. Like this right here is is new just in the last few days. So I think it'll be okay. Fingers crossed it's getting plenty of light because as you can see it's grown well above the little walls of this planter and my air conditioning is on so it's getting a little brush of wind to promote growth so that's good over here I have sadly neglected these I need to give this another good drink of water um, it looks like there's a little bit of mold or something so I need to figure out what's going there these are daisies but as you can see, the water's all out. So I'm going to do that here actually in a second. But they're doing okay. They just stopped growing because there's no water. <laughs> the lavender is dead. But I kind of was expecting that. I don't think the temperature, the amount of sunlight has been right for here. So I'm going to keep this canister and we'll do something else with it. But I'm just going to let it be for now. Then my little herbs, my basil is weird. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give it another drink before vacation and let it do its thing. I think I'm ready for, they sell like really big basil plants at um, the grocery store. So I think next time I need a good amount of basil, I'm gonna get that. Um, and I have some other pots that I can put it in instead of starting from seeds. I just don't get enough sunlight now um, that it's August. So my oregano still is growing. It looks a little sad. I think I missed a good watering day. So, but I gave it a good water yesterday and I'll give it another drink tomorrow morning before I leave. So we'll just see what we get here. It's more pretty than anything. So I love this, like how it comes down over the little box. My dill is still growing. It looks a little brown also. Again, I think it's a combo of, I had a little bit too much space between waterings at some point, but for the most part, I think it's because of sunlight. And then no moss rose, but I'm just keeping the dirt there right now. So that's the update. I think I had I had the glory days already of my windowsill garden have gone come and gone. <laughs> and that's because of the sunlight. I. I don't really get too much direct sunlight from now on until probably next February or March, I think. I'll be paying attention now, so so it's kind of sad. But I'll have to think and look up some things, maybe some succulents or something that don't take a lot of direct sunlight that I can put up here in its place because I love having all this greenery. And I think for this larger one here eventually i'll get some already already grown herb plants like rosemary or whatever whenever i can see them again that are already above the wall of the planter so they'll get plenty of sunlight um but i'll do that when i know i have enough direct sunlight coming in from this window so that's a little update and my pelea is still doing really well it's it's growing again and growing some new um, little shoots or, or whatever you want to call it, leaves. 
um, since I replanted it into this larger pot. So I'm really happy about that. All right, I'm gonna drink some water. And it is time. in the final stretch it's the final countdown <laughs> i just need to put in the drawstring channels so i've cut all of my twill and i've got my trusty safety pin safety pin rather I'm on fumes now and i'm gonna put in all of the drawstrings and all of the trouble clef zipper pulls and then it's packaging time and out the door. But I, it, it's 3.45, the post office closes at five. So I've got to skedaddle and do this. So I will see you on the other side of this. <laughs> expected since I am not an evening person and I've been at it all day long I am crashing <laughs> so I'm gonna call it an evening and finish a lot of my to-dos in the morning first thing which means I'll get up there a little bit later than I'd like to but you know you gotta do what you gotta do so I wanted before I kind of check out and watch some TV I wanted to show you just briefly my thoughts on reorganizing my workspace, which I mentioned earlier in the vlog. Um, I'll go into more depth uh, next week and the week after, but I kind of wanted to give you a little before here so you can see where it's at right now. Okay, let's see if I can do this succinctly here because <laughs> I'm in rambling mode when I'm tired. So I, and first thing first is that I need more storage space for stock that I have in hand because I have moved towards a business model, if you will, of keeping the shop as stocked up as possible instead of having once a month uh, updates. Um, so I'm going to swap these two towers, very Lord of the Rings, these two towers, um, because these drawers are drilled in. So I'm gonna move that over here. And then this one with the baskets will go over here and I'll see if my stock will go in the baskets or if I need one of these or both of these open so I can put the stock stacked up. Um, the stuff in the baskets will have to come out of course, but that'll be a process that I will vlog later on. This will be a multi-week process as I say. Um, I think everything else will stay as is on this wall right here. My pegboard will stay here. Um, it might have to move up eventually. We'll see this. Oh my gosh, this is a hot mess of all kinds of stuff that needs to be organized. And that's because again, I need more storage space. So what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow morning now <laughs> is measuring my Monica's closet. Monica's closet is a reference to friends where Monica is the tidiest, cleanest person, but she has a closet full of stuff. <laughs> and I will show you that here in a second, but I did want to just show you here. I have storage in all of these uh, drawers, and this is also all Ikea furniture for the most part. I think almost everything is Ikea. Um, but I also need... A new table this is down the line um, and Ikea has a great one that's an adjustable stand or adjustable height table that I'm gonna look into more closely and that'll also allow me some storage underneath um, which I need I need like a nice like recycle bin for scraps of fabric so then I can go and um, recycle it because I've identified a place that I want to take my scraps to um, as well as some other packaging materials because while this storage is necessary and needed, it's in the way of some other items that I, I now need that my business has grown. 
Um, and sewing what, so I want a higher table because I need it to be higher for cutting. Right now it's too low and it's killing my back. And yes, I know I could do bed risers, sort of, kind of. It's a little tricky because these uh, leaves go up and down, but there are a lot of hacks out there. But I, again, need some storage space that goes all the way across. Um, so I'm looking at that new Ikea table that's on my list. And then I need something for my sewing machine that's at a better height. So I'm starting to look, um, I also need to measure over here because I'm thinking I might put a sewing table, a very simple sewing table where I can inlay my sewing machine. It'll sit down and flush with the table um, and it'll fit against this wall plus this little extra bookcase that I have over here. So that is something I'm thinking about and going to talk about through with my mom. And then whenever I do get a taller table, this, I'll put the two sides down and I'll put this, I think, over here underneath. And pardon all my mess in my trash right now. This is the, the, the week of shredding and shop stuff and everything. Anyway. Um, so I think this table, when it's all put down, will go under this wreath on this wall right here. And then eventually, when I can have guests over <laughs> again, um, that'll be my dining table. And I'll just keep, I still have to measure to see if that's even possible, but that's what I'm thinking right now. It might be a little bit too, oh, well, I think it might fit. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to keep this is storage as well too because you need all the storage you can get and then i'm going to show you see how i need i need some more like storage under here this is monica's closet now it's not as bad as it could be but it's just a leaning tower of pizza and scraps and all kinds of stuff so it needs a huge reorg and what I would like to do is I'm gonna be taking this just reminds me I need to add this to my list for the morning um, these bags these beautiful floral bags are actually my mom's there is a sewing machine one there's a Cricut one this one is for like notions and all kinds of stuff and I need to bring that back to her. Um, I don't need it anymore. And I was just holding it until she moved and now she has moved. And this is a lot of project boxes and stuff. You can kind of see this is a very tall ceiling, which is great. So there's a lot of potential in here. And what I'd like to do is um, use this really only for the shop storage for the most part. And I'd like to get some drawer, stackable drawers that my mom, I think, has an extra one of in here. And I think it would go in here, maybe with the drawers coming out this way. And then the, right here, I want a shelf, like right here, so that I can stack all my bolts of fabric. Because you can see right now, I've got several kind of squeezed in here right now. And like right there, like there's Christmas and I have like a little itty, like half a yard of Beatrix powder and stuff that I'm saving for smaller bags. So I need, I need it in there. So that is just a really brief overview of the before with much more to come in the coming weeks. And if you have any tips and tricks or ideas, bring them on. I love organizing and doing this kind of thing. So I would love to hear your thoughts and um, yeah, I'm gonna crash now. <laughs> I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Good morning. It is Saturday and I'm on my way up to see family. I'm now in Davis charging up my car and stepping outside for a little bit. It's not too populated right now, but as you can see, I've got my mask on. Just took it off to chat with y'all. I have some, oh, I literally see a squirrel over there. <laughs> so distracted this week, but.
<laughs> anyway, that's what vacation is for, is to get your mind, slow it down a little bit and chill out and get your chakras <laughs> all aligned. Anyway, I have some muffins in the trunk, um, the pumpkin muffins that I made last week that I'm gonna enjoy for breakfast. Uh, I'm gonna edit this vlog a little bit and just kind of drink some more caffeine. I made a nice thermos of Earl Grey tea. I already had coffee this morning and I got a workout this morning. I had all of that recycling that you guys got a little view of yesterday. I took that to our recycling and trash room and cleaned up the house. Anytime you have to leave for an extended amount of time, there's a lot of like cleanup and make sure you take out stuff in your refrigerator that'll go bad, all that stuff. So yeah, anyway. I'm hungry, time for some muffins. My sister's ever-growing garden. I am going to call it an end to this week's vlog. I will have so much more to share with you all, but vacation is just beginning. I'll be sharing mom's craft room next week and all of the progress on my personal makes, my cardigan. Hopefully I'll be finishing it. We'll see. A cross stitch and finishing all of that as well as a new project that I brought just in case, a garter snake cow, which is a brioche project that I want to pick up again. So there'll be lots to share next week as well. I hope you had a wonderful week that you enjoyed this studio vlog. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you'll be alerted to future content. Again, I hope you are well, you're staying safe, and I will see you next Sunday. Bye. Need some sunscreen. <laughs>